So, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sara Carracedo, and I'm second year PhD student. So, today I will talk a little bit about PHOS4 and its role in ALS. So, I want to highlight about this disease the neuroimmune crosstalk, with a first neuroprotective state where microglia cells protect motor neurons from death, following by a neurotoxic state, characterized by high levels of ATP concentration, neuroinflammation, and infiltration of peripheral cells. So, in this context, PHOS4 receptor uh, activated by ATP concentrations may be a promising target to better understand ALS. But what is this receptor? It's a genotropic receptor activated by ATP and high permeable to calcium. So this receptor is expressed in many cell types such as neuron, microglia, and in the periphery in macrophages. And seems to uh, do different functions in the central nervous system and outside such as synaptic transmission regulated, microglial activity, and also blood vessel tone. However, PHOS4 just direct these functions when he's activated. And in normal conditions, this is not the case. PHOS4 remains a constitutive internalized by the clattering system, more specific with the interaction between the AP2 protein and the receptor, and is retaining the isosomal pulse. But this view changes in the pathological context. Pitches for now will be found at the increase at the surface level of this tail by mobilization of intracellular pools and the novel expression. However, in the pathological context, the role of pitches for in the, in the cell types are not well understood. But our team decided to start uh, working on the role of pitches for in ALS. And for that, we use the SOT1 G93A, for now named SOT1, a mice model of ALS. And we found in this model that many cell types were increasing the pitches for expression, uh, such as microglia, parallel to the disease progression, but also in the periphery, in, peripheral, in macrophages. And we decided to take this uh, cell type because of the recently role in ALS and also because of the high expression of pitches for in these cells. So we decided to take macrophages from SOT1 mice, and we wanted to study by biotinylation surface chains expression. We uh, decided to take different stages of the disease, presymptomatic anti P75, and symptomatic state at P100. And we find that even before the symptoms onset, PHOS4 was fine upregulated, the surface expression. And we now were wondering why this upregulation was due to, and we hypothesized the following, that maybe the misfolded SO1 protein was interfering with the trafficking of PHOS4. Let's talk about the working hypothesis. In normal conditions, the AP2 protein will bind the C-terminal of PHOS4, internalizing this receptor in lysosomes. However, when the mutated form of SOT1 is present, now AP2 will interact with SOT1 acting as a competitive, ne a competitive negative uh, inhibitor of the internalization of PHOS4, promoting the surface increase of PHOS4 in ALS. Uh, how do we prove this? We perform immunoprecipitations to study interactions between proteins, and we, study, we see that the interaction between AP2 and the mutated SOD was increasing over the disease, pro disease progression. But what happened with SOT1, with uh, PHOS4, with AP2? Exactly the opposite. PHOS4 was decreasing the interaction with AP2. So we conclude here that maybe the interaction with folding SOT1 with AP2 was blocking the internalization of PHOS4, leading to this surface increase uh, that we see in peripheral cells. Uh, and now we wanted to see more to see the impact of the modulation of PHOS4 in the mice model of ALS in SOT1. So we developed two new models. In the first one, the PHOS4 KI mice, we will swap the internalization motif of PHOS4 by the non-fluorescent, uh, by the fluorescent m protein. So this not endocytosis protein will lead to the surface increase of PHOS4 in all the cell times where it's expressed. And we do the opposite. We will block the pitches for expression uh, and we will suppress the expression of pitches for in these cell types. So when we cross uh, these models with the SOT1 mice, we will see the impact of pitches for. And for that, we perform different motor performance tests, but I will be focusing the swimming test. 
Uh, the swimming test is based in the time that takes the animal to reach the platform. So the less time it takes, the better metal performance is doing. And we found surprisingly that both increasing the surface expression of pitches for unblocking led to an improve in the motor performance. So less time to reach the platform and even more animals able to swim at the later stages. And this paradoxical result was also in accordance that both the genotypes increasing and blocking pitches for led to a higher survival. But yeah, so we are quite happy because this result has been recently published in Cellular Molecular Life Science. So let's check a little what we have until now. We know that misfolded so one protein interfere with pitches for internalization by the AP2 protein. And this inter interaction will lead to the surface increase that we observe in microphages, even before the onset of symptoms. And we also see that other cell types, such as microglia cells, also increase vitreous for expression over the disease progression. And we have this paradoxical result that both blocking and increasing pitches for in the SOT1 mice improve motor performance and survival. And we didn't understand this result at that time, and we hypothesized the following. Is there a cell-specific role of pitchers for in ALS? And for answer this question, we need, unfortunately, a lot of animals models. So let's try to understand them. The flux pitchers for KI mice, about what we talk about, with a non-endocytosis m protein, will be crossed with a specific promoter fine in microglia cells and in macrophages. Therefore, we have just the surface increased expression in these cell types. And we cross this model with a specific promoter in neurons, the synapse incre, we find a surface increase just in neuronal cells. And we will do exactly the opposite, blocking pitches for expression in, uh, specifically in macrophages microglia and in neuronal cells. So now we have the bell of these models, so we need to validate them. So we perform immunostochemistry and we use different cell antibodies to stain neurons, microglia, and to see this mutated form of pitches for. And we found that in the general KI mice, we found this expression of pitches for M cherry in all the in both in neurons and in microglia cells. However, this expression of M cherry in the CD1's degree is just found in microglia cells. And when we see the synapse incre, this expression of M cherry protein is found in neurons. That, so with this, we confirm this expression of pitches for M cherry. But we are we don't want just to change the to, uh, to change pitches for m cherry by pitches by... Do we want to increase the expression of this at the surface? So for that, we need to perform biotinylation analysis, and we do so with a specific m cherry antibody and with the native form of pitches 4. And we found that just the 3D1s B3 and the pitches 4 ki in the macrophages were increasing the surface expression, why the other cell types, why the other genotypes were expressing normal levels of pitches 4. So this result was confirming that we have substitute and increased pitches 4 at the surface. So what do we do with these models? The same as before. We now will study the impact in ALS of cell specific expression of pitches 4 in order to see if pitches 4 could be beneficial or pathological depending on the cells. But we are in a session about biomarkers, so let's talk about biomarkers. We also propose that pitchers for maybe could be used as a biomarker for ALS patients. Why? As a reminder, we have found in peritoneal macrophages that pitchers for was overexpressed even before the onset of the symptoms. So we are asking if maybe the same apply, applies to patients with ALS in order to see if we can use pitchers for as a biomarker. So we optimize a new protocol where we take blood samples from patients and we will, by centrifugation, recollect the mononuclear fractions, so the monocyte, which is the precursor of macrophages. And with this sample, we will uh, uh, perform flow cytometry with two antibodies, one staining the surface, another staining the intracellular part. And we do, we do a ratio. So would you know that for potential to know if some can be a biomarker or not, we need to study difference between healthy patients and ALS patients, but more importantly, between other neuroinflammatory disease. So because we know that p 4 can increase uh, dependent to ATP concentrations, and this disease, uh, we know that p 4 is increased. But we are interested in the trafficking, so 
we will focus in the trafficking of P2S4 between these two patients. And this is just preliminary data, but seems that P2S4 is increasing specifically at the surface of ALS patients, comparing with other patients with other neuroinflammatory disease. However, we need a more, a more patients, more healthy controls in order to know if we can use or not pitches for as a biomarker. So these last conclusions is that we have developed and characterized novel specific mice, and they actually see an increase uh, of features for specifically in microphages, microglia, and in neurons. And with these models, we will be able to answer the stereo-specific role of pitches 4 in ALS, and also we will continue doing experiments in order to address if pitches 4 could be or not used as a biomarker. So I would like to thank the Arslan meeting for giving me the opportunity to talk and all my team and Wendell for the two of patients and Sandrine. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very nice talk. And we understand that you spent a lot of time in the animal facility. Yeah. <laughs> Are Quite. there any questions? Um, hi, thanks for for this very nice talk. Um, so I'm wondering for uh, the biomarker part, uh, you were not expecting, I'm here, you were oh, not yeah, expecting uh, to see, um, because there from the preliminary data you show, you have a rather an increase in ALS compared to um, hmm. neuroinflammatory uh, no diseases. And uh, you didn't compare with controls, but you were not. You do you expect actually to see the upregulation? That's what I understood in the neuroinflammation patients. Hmm, that's so, the point. And if you want to use it as a biomarker, uh, I okay. I, I understand comparing with the neuroinflammation. That's very interesting, but hmm. you don't need a like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Steady we, we need state it. or something yeah. to be able to say that. It hmm. is the point is that we have just started a few months ago these experiments, and uh, we really wanted to have access to control uh, patients, but we unfortunately we don't have it until now. But we have access to other neuropathic pain and other myasthenia, other uh, diseases that uh, they have already published in many papers about the increase uh, over expression of pitches for. But we are just interested in the surface expression, that is more specifically. And this seems to be, until the moment, more specifically to ALS. But it's true that uh, maybe there's not the case. But we need to compare with control, for sure. And the neuroinflammation patient, they, do they take, uh, when you took their blood, they, they are under some drugs because you mentioned yeah, uh, you know, no. something and that could have an impact, an impact on, on the it. P2X uh, at the surface or, yeah. or not at all? We try, well, the, the, the doctor, try, like the, the, the blood extraction is in the morning, so it, they, we, they are recommended not to take nothing until the moment of the extraction because it, these effects can be altered. And we take into account all of this and also the type of, of inflammatory disease and the type of ALS that we have. And just to follow up on Severin's questions, do you think it could be also a prognostic biomarker? Does the, the surface expression of P2X4 on the macrophage, does it increase over time while, while the disease wor uh, worsen in mice? Uh, I, I, like the question is if... Uh, I didn't understand do, so do much the question. Do you see a higher uh, surface expression yeah. of P2X4 uh, hmm. receptor on the macrophages yeah. uh, at end stage, at disease end stage for SOD1 mice? Yeah. Or, uh, when comparing to early stage. Yeah, that's the point. That interesting result here is that in SOD1 mice, this increase was observed even before the symptoms. So at P40, when the animals are completely sane, they were already overexpressing at the surface pitches for. So this is super interesting for us because yes, these people arrive in the pre-symptomatic or starting symptomatic. So pitches for, if we translate this to clinic side, should be already increased in these monocytes. Okay, but you, you cannot quantify this increase uh, of surface expression. So you cannot say if it was higher at end stage than in disease. Yeah, um, uh, that's the point. Uh, we are doing a ratio. So actually we are comparing the total global expression of pitches 4 uh, comparing just with the surface. So we are like not interesting if the overexpression, because general, because I mean, if this oh, is this a general overexpression, you increase the intracellular part, but you also increase the surface part. 
So when you do a ratio, you are forgetting about the over increase, but focus on the surface increase. If this is going to the surface or not. 